Hey folks, it's been a little while. Happy Halloween. Uh, I've got a different sort of video today and I think it'll be interesting. Now, uh, you may not know if you're not following my Instagram that I've been doing a lot of digital sculpting and 3D printing lately. Um, and you can actually see some of my uh, recent work on that if you watch the new Muppets Haunted Mansion special. Um, I sculpted a lot of the design elements and props in that. Now, when you're designing something in the computer that needs to integrate with a real world object, um, oftentimes the challenge is getting a representation of that real object into the computer so that your new design can be worked together with it. Um, and the answer to that is oftentimes 3D scanning. So I was very excited when the company that makes the RevoPoint Pop 3D Scanner uh, reached out and asked if I would do a little demo and uh, show something that you can do for Halloween with this. So here's my little project as I learned to use the RevoPoint Pop. Um, I decided to take a scan of my head, take a scan of this latex mask that I sculpted last year, and bring them together in ZBrush, which is a digital sculpting program. Morph this mask around to get me the look of an old school vacuform type mask. 3D printing that. So this is this mask, rescaled, reshaped. Um, and this 3D print, I then took a vacuform on top of to create this new mask. So, uh, let me show you what I did. There are a couple different ways that you can do the scan. Um, one is to hold the scanner in your hand and move it around the object that you want to scan. The other is to have the object on this motorized turntable that came with the kit and have the scanner stationary on a tripod. Um, you'll also see this black plastic underneath that was provided um, and that is there because the scanner doesn't pick up that shiny black surface and so it won't accidentally scan the table. It'll only see the object in space. I like to use the turntable method um, because it's moving in such a slow and controlled manner that um, it's a lot easier for the scanning software to maintain tracking on the object, whereas um, if you're moving it by hand and you start moving too fast, uh, it'll lose tracking and you can get errors in your scan. One time I got a whole face on the side of a head because um, it just got confused by the uh, different textures. I found that it's a good practice to pause the scan every so often um, and double check that I'm not getting any errors in the scan. And if I am, like see here, they've got sort of an extra nose going next to where the nose is. Um, I'm going to just undo a few times to eliminate that incorrect positioned data and uh, then resume and, and try to get everything back to how it's supposed to be. So it can take a little while to get a full scan of an object, um, but eventually this is what I ended up with. Um, this is the full scan of the mask. You can see I didn't bother to get underneath at all because I don't need that for this uh, project that I'm doing. I did do a fully handheld scan of my own head um, just by standing very still and moving the scanner very, very slowly up and down and around. Um, I decided that because 3D scanners like this have trouble scanning hair because of the shininess and the texture of it, um, I would put on a little beanie to allow it to capture the shape of my head. Um, I discovered a different problem in that, which is that the knit pattern on here being just this series of rows that are exactly the same, um, confuses the tracking because as it's trying to figure out where on the head it is, it just keeps seeing the same shape over and over again. So by putting a bunch of the tracking dots on that came in the kit, um, I gave it a better chance at capturing the head without getting off track. 
and here is the scan of my head. Um, you can see there's some chunky weird stuff happening under my neck um, and that's because I was scanning with one arm and then switched to scanning the other arm so the position of my shoulders shifted around a lot. Um, but it came out pretty nice and you can see uh, I needed to shave when I did this and it actually did a pretty decent job of picking up where my facial hair was. Uh, which is kind of nice because that can be challenging for a scanner. So I brought the two together, um, the pirate mask and my head, and you can see that they're actually scanned to scale. Um, it knows the dimensions of the object that you're scanning, which is really helpful um, in making things work within the real world. Um, I modified the pirate mask into the proportions of the vacuum form mask that I wanted to have and I split it into two pieces because my 3D printer which is an Elgoo Saturn is not big enough to do the whole thing in one but I split it right at the bandana line um, so it'll be an easy blend and I printed them out one at a time it took about a day for the face and about 15 hours for the bandana so I cleaned up those 3D prints and I super glued them together, cleaned up the seam just a little bit, and I put that right onto my vacuum former. Um, I used this vacuum former to make parts for the raven kits and the staring statues, as well as the projection heads. I wait for the plastic to get hot enough and then I start the vacuum and pull it down and it cools pretty quickly into the shape of the mask. I'm going to take that off and trim it to shape. And I just did a real quick and simple paint job on this. Um, it's one light color over the whole thing. And then I go from the bottom and simulate shadows by spraying a darker shade from a really low angle, which creates this really cool ghostly effect. And then this is my new vacuum formed Halloween mask. I've done a lot of 3D scanning with another technology called photogrammetry where uh, you take a bunch of pictures all around an object and run it through a piece of software that looks for commonalities between the photos and generates a 3D object out of that data, um, which works really well. Um, but I think that the advantage that this type of scanner has is that this is getting the scale of the object at the same time, so you're not having to uh, figure out the size that it's supposed to be after you get it into the computer. Um, and it's also very cool that it's generating that model in real time and you're able to watch it happen and correct for errors as they occur. Um, I should note that what I'm running is the beta version of the Mac software for a USB connection. Um, and so some of the issues that I'm having may be related to that. I think that there's not a lot of other options at this price point, uh, which is about $600. Um, so for that, it's great. It's not the same as a $10,000 3D scanner. Um, but I'm really excited to be integrating this into my workflow in other projects as I go forward. If you enjoyed this, if you'd like to see more like it, uh, let me know because as I said, this is sort of a new type of video for me, um, but it is the type of project that I'm doing more and more on my own uh, for personal projects and professionally. And uh, happy Halloween.